Hey everyone, John Daly here. I've been asked several times to do a show on sprouting, so since I have a few things that I can show you at the moment, I'm going to do a show uh, talking about what sprouting is, what it does for you, and pretty much why you want to do it. Now there's several methods to do it, so I'm going to get started and probably talk a little bit faster. Um, what I'm going to cover is the jar method, I'm going to cover the tray method, and pretty much the soaked or what they call the hemp bag method. Um, but first I kind of want to talk about what sprouting is and why you want to do it. So we've all heard about things like pulses and grains that they can cause like this bloating or gas when you eat it, even when you cook it on the stove. And the main reason why that is is because you're cooking a lot of these enzyme inhibitors or with the, the phytic acid that's in the hull of these pulses. And what that does is make it very difficult to digest. Um, for multiple reasons. One is actually that it's bound to a lot of these minerals that if they aren't absorbed properly because they're bound to the phytic acid molecularly they'll just cause a lot of irritation in the intestines and subsequently will actually pass it and not really absorb it. So what we want to do is actually either take digestive enzymes with phytase which will break those bonds or sprout it where we actually lose the phytic acid altogether. And in passing actually phytic acid can take niacin from your body and Obviously we don't want to do that. Niacin is quite important. But in regards to sprouting, if we do this on a regular basis, we'll actually notice that we'll get more B vitamins, we'll get more zinc, we'll get more copper, we'll get more calcium because we're actually liberating it from the, the phytic acid. So we have the tray method here, we have the jar method and the bag method. All are quite easy and I actually use all three for different things. For the really small seeds, we or I commonly use the tray. So the tray um, would work well for broccoli, alfalfa, radish, um, sesame, things like that. Even sunflower works pretty well in here. Now the small seeds too, things like broccoli and radish, many people notice that they'll get a little fuzz on the roots and that's actually part of the plant. So you can definitely grow mold and I'll cover how to kind of avoid that. But with those two specifically, radish and broccoli, it's quite common to see that, and that's completely normal. You can eat all you want on those ends. Now, last thing before I get into these, with sprouting, you're creating far more enzymes. Now, even if you think about this from the molecular standpoint, you're taking something that's dormant, something that's got all its, its, its shell around it, uh, going into the plant form. So from seed into plant, you're now activating the seed. So you're not only creating more enzymes in it, but you're creating more life in it. You're creating more uh, nutrition from it because that's actually what's more appropriate for our bodies to eat rather than harvesting a lot of these small seeds and, and grinding them up and eating them respectively. So this will actually give you a lot more energy and they're so much easier to digest. If you have Crohn's, if you're uh, different types of ulcers, if you have colitis, irritable bowel, these are amazing things for you. Especially if you have like a compromised gallbladder or pancreas where you're not creating adequate bile or bile salts or uh, enzymes to break food down. Amazing things that you want to do. These are amazing things that you want to get started with. And they really, really help. Even if you're eating it with like difficult to eat foods, this will kind of make an enzyme bath in your stomach which will make it really nice to digest those harder, uh, let's say more protein based, really tightly bond molecular foods. So let's get started here. I'm going to cover just doing milk thistle. Maybe you've heard about this being a nice purgative for the liver. And it definitely is. It's, it's known as Chardin-Marie in, in French. And it works very well for neutralizing toxins. Um, even people that have done a lot of different amphetamines or different uh, substance abuses, this will clear the system quicker than anything. And maybe you've seen it in paler capsule form. But the seeds are quite quite small and they sprout very nicely but what I'm actually going to do here is germinate them or sprout them overnight and do what I call a 24 hour sprout and I'm actually going to dry them but I'm going to demonstrate for you here what I normally do so I'm going to put all these into a small little glass and what makes it a lot easier to do sprouting in glasses is just having simple cheesecloth or draining cloth that they call it and simply covering the jars with that. Some people use wire mesh. I find this works better for me just in my own my own little world. 
So I'm going to fill this with water. And you don't need too much because for these ones, they'll actually soak up a fair bit. But I'm actually going to be doing only about a four or five hour soak with this. It's actually dependent on the weather. Since we're coming into a, a later spring right now, I actually don't need to soak it that long. So I'm going to leave that here and I'm going to soak it for until you yeah, have about five or six hours. Cover it with my elastic and I'll show you what I'll do this with this later. This will be the special project for the video. Now for the other jar here, I'm actually going to do about half a cup of green lentils and I'm going to soak these generally overnight but uh, with warmer weather I find they, they soak up quite well in about six or seven hours and same process cheesecloth on top elastic band and this cheesecloth you can get anywhere you can get it at many stores and it's really cost effective They're all, it's 100% cotton so what I'm going to do with this is the same thing I'm going to fill it with water